days um it's just the winds blowing you know every time the seasons change in between like you know summer into fall and fall into winter and winter into spring you know in between we have winds in the state that are they're powerful enough to pull the siding off my building okay that's that's how powerful they are but they put up new siding here last uh, last year after we had a terrible windstorm and so far it's holding, but now it's the roof shingles that are coming off. <laughs> um, they didn't replace those, so um, there's a whole front yard full of roof shingles um, that they're going to have to clean up and deal with uh, probably late, later this spring or, you know, or in the summer maybe. Depends on the landlord. She just raised the rent here um, $150 for, you know, taxes and uh, you know resources and stuff that are costing more so <clears throat> you know I think I it was coming I figured they uh, when they people start to get extra money from the government and you know pay increases and and uh, you know government benefit increases uh, yeah they were gonna raise the rent I knew that even before this thing in, in uh, Ukraine started here but um, yeah it's, it was pretty predictable and so, speaking of, of which, uh, uh, the Ukrainian First Lady uh, is pleading uh, for the war to end, to stop the war. Um, that's what they're, they're hoping to, uh, she's hoping to, to convince people. Um, you know, the thing of it is, is, you know, nobody wants war. The only people that want war are nuts, okay? <laughs> so, stopping war is like trying to herd cats. Because not everybody is going to be on the same page, you know what I'm saying? So, how how do you deal with people who want war and tell them not to have war, okay? How, do you think anybody could have said to Putin, don't start this war in Ukraine, and he would have said, okay, of course not. Because he had it in his head that he was going to do this. I don't, you know, he'd probably been planning this for a long time. Of course, from what we've seen on the ground, his plan doesn't seem to be all that great because uh, he's getting his ass kicked all over Ukraine because, one, he's dealing with uh, 
mutinies inside of his own army, okay? Uh, second, the, the equipment that he's got, the tanks, the, the trucks, the, the stuff is old. And, you know, you could see the rust on him and things like that. He hasn't been taking very good care of his military, which is not unusual because Russia has never uh, been one to really take care of its military or its troops. So we're seeing a, an aged military trying to take on uh, Ukraine uh, with new, new equipment coming in to Ukraine from other countries. You know, like the uh, anti-tank bombs and the uh, uh, surface-to-air missiles and shit they're getting to knock down aircraft. I mean, they're getting, they're getting state-of-the-art equipment from the rest of the world while Russia is still using 30-year-old crap, <laughs> you know, that, it, that they got. So, uh, you know, Putin was really, he really underestimated Ukrainians' resolve. They, he didn't think they were going to get any help at all, probably. I don't know why he thought that, because, you know, Ukraine is a democratic country, and there's, if there's nothing the West uh, likes more is, you know, they, they like to see, they like to help uh, countries that are trying to become democratic, uh, you know, to make them into uh, allies eventually, um, which uh, I guess they couldn't do soon enough, you know, seeing how they're, this thing has started. And, uh, you know, I mean, imagine, though, I mean, I'm wondering what would happen if Ukraine was a member of NATO and Putin decided to pull the stunt. Would he have done it? I mean, would he have gone into Ukraine if he'd have known that uh, that country was a member of NATO? Hmm. One can only wonder. Maybe that's why he, he felt like he needed to do something now because they were fixing to do just that. And he didn't want that to happen. So he sent in what he had. But uh, now he's reaching out to China and uh, China is willing to negotiate, uh, you know, maybe sending in some uh, equipment and troops to help them. So, you know, if, if that happens, we'll also be fighting China. All I can think of is people, if we had done more at the beginning of this thing with Ukraine, uh, you know, China may not have been interested in taking on NATO at the same time. But the, the fact that NATO was doing nothing only seems to be encouraging you know, these tyrants to say, hey, now is the time, because NATO is so afraid of getting nuked that, hey, they're not willing to, to, to defend anybody, you know, they're so afraid of their own damn weapons that they, you know, maybe the, the, the power has always been in our hands because we're willing uh, to push the envelope and they're too scared to step across the line, you know, so maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's one reason why this thing here with China is happening and that's not a good thing for us, because now, you know, we're going to be looking at you know, a two front thing. You know, we got on the west coast, we got China, on in the east coast, we got Russia. So, I mean, what the hell are we going to do if if that happens? You know. And uh, you know, all I can think of is this: this is going to escalate, and it was dumb for anybody to think that it wouldn't uh, if we didn't start rattling our sword and showing them that we're willing uh, to go all the way if that's what it takes to defend Ukraine, because um, this could have stopped already I you know that the putting in the no-fly zone uh, we need to do that and I wish the Christ that the people uh, at the NATO or at the at the UN or whatever uh, can come to that fucking uh, understanding because the longer we wait the harder it's going to be in order to do that because if Russia is allied with China then we're gonna we're looking at you know a global war happening at this, this being Ukraine being a spark you know the gasoline on the ground and we sparked the, uh, the match on it. You know, that's what I'm saying. They're turning Ukraine into the flashpoint of where the war is going to begin. And we should have done something way before then uh, in order to, to, to uh, show Putin that this is going to stop here and now. Okay. Like I said, we should have went in there from the very beginning, you know, uh, with no fly zones and then send our military in there and push Russia right out of Ukraine. That's what we should have done right from the get go. Okay. And the fact that, you know, we're, we sit here on our thumbs and we're sitting here fretting over, oh, new World War Three, World War Three, <laughs> fuck that, okay? If you can't challenge your enemy to see how far they're willing to go, then you don't know your enemy. You don't even know who you're fighting. How, do, how does anyone not know Putin after all these years, okay? We should know by now that if Putin really was intent on starting it, 
uh, we'd already be nuked out of our world right now. He would have done this a long time ago if he was willing to use nukes to stop us, okay? Instead, for all, what, 35, 40 years, he's been placating everybody in the world, and he hasn't been doing a damn thing to, to boost his military. So does he, did he really care about his military? Apparently not, okay? Who fucking knows what condition his missiles are in over there? You know, do they even take care of them? I mean, when he pushes the button, are these things even going to launch? I mean, that, that's the kind of situation they're looking at over there. So, I, you know, I think that we are over, we're worrying too much over nothing. I think, in my opinion, I don't think Putin is, gonna, is willing to take it to that point. Okay, but when you put China in the mix, China might be willing to push the buttons uh, against us. So that's why this is not a good thing. If China start, steps in and allies itself with Russia... Um, everybody's fucked in, okay? Nobody's going to be able to do a damn thing. If they're not going to do anything now, they're certainly not going to do anything with a united communist uh, world on the other side of this planet here, okay? They're just not going to do anything, and we're always going to be... Uh, so you're going to be looking at a Cold War of a size we've never seen before in the world, okay? I, I don't think that's going to be any safer than, than uh, where we are now. I mean, we're always going to be at the brink. And if people want to live those fucking years in the 80s all over again, where every day could be the, the last day of their life, then, hey, let's do it, okay? Because you, you seem to think that's okay the first time around. Let's do it again, right? So who cares what country gets overtaken, you know, as long as it's not us, right? If the United States isn't the target, so who cares how many others fall? You know, sooner or later, we're all going to be surrounded anyway, right, by threats. So, you know... I mean, that's, that's the general attitude I'm getting from a lot of people online, is that they would rather see a day of a, of a, a bigger and more dangerous Cold War than we've ever had in the, in the world, you know? I don't know, I just don't get people. But being somebody who was in the military and understands the need to have a military and understands the need why we should de defend democracy in the world... No matter if it's part of NATO yet or not, okay? If they're trying to be democratic, then these are people you can trust. And if they're trying to be democratic, then, you know, we're obligated to have to defend them. You know, nobody had to come to the United States or, or, or to this land to, to help us fight the British. We didn't have no treaties with anybody. So why, you know, but they came anyway. So my, my, my issue is that if there were no nuclear uh, weapons... We'd already be in Ukraine right now fighting back the Russians, okay? We'd already be doing that. But because we have nukes now, we're like, no, no, we don't want to do that. Okay, we can't. We just can't. However, the majority of Americans uh, are, are in agreement that we should put a no-fly zone there. And I, and I totally stand with that idea. I think a no-fly zone is needed, and if it has to be enforced, so be it. But it's going to put the ball back in Putin's court as to how, how uh, well... How intention, intended is he to uh, push the buttons? Are he, is he willing to go to World War III, uh, Armageddon, whatever, or not? We'll find out, you know. And, you know, like somebody had mentioned here online before, you know, it doesn't really matter uh, if Putin fires his tactical nukes into Ukraine to fight to win this war. Okay, or he launches them at uh, NATO countries. Okay, the end result is going to be the same: nuclear exchange. Okay, and since he's already uh, breaking the rules of engagement uh, in Ukraine and he's committing war crimes and crimes against humanity in there while he's been fighting this thing, okay, then that only means that you, that the next level where he's been going to use chemical bombs is coming up. Okay. He's already trying to accuse Ukraine of creating chemical war, uh, uh, missiles, okay, which they never had that ability to do. Uh, you know, the, the just country just wasn't, uh, hasn't been around long enough to set up, to have money enough to build any fucking thing like that. And nobody would supply them chemical bombs anyway since they're outlawed. But Russia is as, as telling their people, Putin is telling uh, his people that, hey, uh, they got uh, factories, they got... Uh, uh, plants over there that are making chemical bombs and you know they were going to use them on us so we got to take them out but people are saying well he's saying that because he's trying to justify what he's going to be using later on and then he'll just turn around and say see I told you Ukraine has these things and he's already been telling people in Russia that Ukraine that Ukraine has been uh, 
bombing its own people, okay, that it's, the, you know, the, the, the Russians are not responsible for the deaths over there. The Ukrainians are because they're, they're actually d killing their own uh, citizens, which we all know is a, a fucking lie, okay? But the fact that he's saying that and then later says that they're making chemical bombs only means that Russia is laying down the excuse, okay, laying down the excuse that when, uh, when Russia starts using uh, chemical bombs over there in Ukraine, uh, Putin will then turn around and say, see, I told you. You know, he always, they always had those friggin' bombs, now they're using that against their people, so this is, that's why we are a peacekeeping force, we're trying to stop this from happening over there. Okay, so he's totally spun this thing around, 180 degrees, uh, as far as the Russians are concerned, as to why they're over there, okay, why this is happening. Um, and so, unfortunately for the Russian people, they can't actually get the right news over there. I mean, they're kind of stuck with, uh, what do they got, government-controlled media? Because um, he shut everything down that was coming in to Russia as far as uh, independent news organizations. So essentially, they're like stuck watching Fox News all day. They can't. That's the only news they can get. So it's all state-run media uh, that they can watch. So naturally, they're not going to know the truth about anything. Okay? And anybody that, uh, you know, uh, uploads the truth or something uh, on, uh, on the Internet... Uh, into Russia or somehow gets it in there is looking at being uh, attacked, uh, arrested. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's forbidden over there now for anybody in Russia to find news outlets outside of their country. So when that happens, you know, that's a big red flag that Putin is up to something that he wants to do. And I think what's happening is, is he's laying down his foundation uh, for creating a, a an excuse for something he's he's going to commit, which is going to be another war crime. How many war crimes are we going to let this guy get away with before NATO wakes up and says, you know, he can't be trusted not to launch the nukes at us. You know, if he's going to do it, he's going to do it. So let's just go in there and put the no-fly zone in, and, and if he's ready to launch those things, we're going to have to strike first and fast and knock him down as soon as he's got him in the air. That's all we can do. Okay, because now we know just how fucking crazy this guy is. All right, we know how fucking crazy he is. So, people, if you're afraid of, of a fucking World War Three or a nuclear war happening, you know, know this. We wouldn't be where we are today had we not used, you know, the bombs in Japan that we used to stop World War Two. Okay, that's our fault. That's our fault, and we allowed scientists to create this shit. All right, the things that we should have done back then uh, to to have won that war were to just continue the firebombing because that was what was scaring the shit out of the, out of the uh, Japanese, not the nuclear bombs. Okay, that we sent. They were they were ready to capitulate at that point. By the time we dropped Hiroshima, you know, the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we they were already willing to come to the table to to surrender. Okay, so the bombings were working. But we had to, we felt the need to have to emphasize just how much more we can do when we drop those other two ones to hurry up the end of the war because we were losing so many people. Well, you can't fight a world war without breaking a few eggs. And that the fact is, is that, you know, the, what we did is we set a precedent that the rest of the world felt incumbent on to meet. Okay, everybody wanted that fucking bomb because they felt that the United States was going to bomb the whole fucking world. All right, so... Everybody's got them now. So here we are. Everybody, what was that thing they used to call mad? Mutually assured dest uh, destruction, okay? Well, this is where that theory falls apart because mad only works when everybody's too afraid to launch their nukes. And now you see that, you know, you can't depend on humanity to do what you think they're gonna do, okay? <laughs> you just can't, you can't, you can't rely on uh, people not being willing to, to go all the way. There's people in the world that are willing to do that and they'll do it uh, in spite, okay? And the fact is, if you're not ready to use these things, then you should have never built them in the first place. We never should have built these nukes in the first place if we were too afraid to use them, okay? Even if the rest of the world had them, all right, it doesn't really matter because if, if all the other worlds are using them, they'll still blow up the planet. So what the hell difference does it matter if we have them or not? <laughs> the fact is, is that um, 
we have to have them and we have to make sure Russia understands that. And if that doesn't scare the people in Russia to overthrow their government, then what the hell going, is going to? Okay? Maybe, you know, maybe the, the, the idea that we get so close to a nuclear war, just like what happened in, at the Cuba, in the Cuban Missile Crisis, that everybody backed down. Okay? It had nothing to do about negotiations. Okay? That really wasn't what stopped that fucking uh, conflict from happening. It was the idea that both sides were so willing to push the buttons. Okay? They had to figure in their mind, is this worth dying for? Okay? Is this worth dying for? And, th and they decided, no, it's not. So then they took the other alternative, and that was to make uh, an agreement between the two to save face for both of them. You know, you, you take your missiles out of Turkey, and we'll take our missiles out of Cuba, and that's, that'll be it, and we'll both declare victory. That's what they did, because they didn't, have, they didn't have the balls to push all the buttons in. Okay? So that's why I know, with Putin being old-school Russian uh, Soviet that he is, uh, and now that he sees that the that he saw our weakness here uh, in the last few weeks, he saw the the weakness of the dem, uh, the uh, uh, the democracy in the world that we're not willing to die for for our belief in in life here. We don't we're not willing to take that where they are, or they may not be. I don't know, but we seem to have to come to the, to a head again. We have to stare each other down. And see which side is willing to uh, to flinch. And if the people in Russia are all against this, okay, and and they are protesting like crazy over there against Putin, okay. So we know there's a whole there's a a segment of their uh, uh, population that does not want this this war to continue in Ukraine. Um, if they and if they find out that you know the United States is is like seconds away from launching. If that doesn't create a, uh, you know, a nationwide uprising against the government, I don't know what will, people. I really don't, because I think what NATO is doing is they're trying to see how much the Russian civilians can take before they do something to stop this over there. They want the Russian people to stop this. And right now, uh, Putin's back is to the wall here, I think. And he's calling for help. He's getting ready to bring it, bring out the big guns, okay? And he wants, and he ain't got enough military uh, to really suppress uh, the, the population. I mean, he's, he, what, he's arrested and locked up about five, 6,000 people already over there. I mean, how many more do you think they can jam into a fucking cell? <laughs> okay? Uh, at, so, at some point, they're gonna, their hands are going to be full and they can't do it. They're not going to be able to arrest anymore. What they're going to do is they'll just start shooting people when they see them. And when that happens, do you think that's going to make those people over there go against their government or not? You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's important that we that these people see how far this is going to go if they allow this to happen, if they allow this war to continue. Okay? If we don't, if we don't pressure, put more pressure on the Soviets or the Russians, rather. Sorry. If we don't put more pressure on the Russians over there to stand up against their government, and if they don't see the barrel being pointed at them from the United States and NATO, uh, they're not going to feel nervous enough to want to go and do, you know, uh, the extreme thing, and that's to take down Putin or take down his government and make Putin irrelevant. That way, it would free up the rest of the world to go track Putin down and have him arrested and, and uh, put on trial for war crimes. You know... But our options are being limited here day by day. Our, our hands are being tied so much that, you know, we're going to be struggling to untie them. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is to take extreme measures, which nobody wants to see happen. So, you see, this is what, you know, uh, this is what is called... Um, a test of humanity uh, and ways. I mean, it's a test of our, a test of Americans to test, are we really uh, the people we say we are, that we want to defend democracy, that we're really the people who defend freedom, people's uh, rights and their, you know, their uh, ability to do what they want and not be controlled by their government, even though day by day we're losing our freedoms right here in the united states to communist people communist thinkers okay like donald trump 
uh, and we saw what four years of a communist president was like. So, you know, we're, we're in danger of losing our footing right here in the United States, and we're not willing to take the, the measures that we have to take in order to stop that from happening. Okay, we let the, the, the Republicans and the like-minded people of Trump to go and, and uh, continue to lay barriers down to uh, make voting more difficult, uh, to continue their racist, you know, uh, 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 tirades towards people. I mean, there are already people attacking American Russians. You know, <laughs> you know, in the, in the United States, there's been some articles that come up, you know, uh, Russian-Americans that are over here and they're being attacked by random people. Okay, so it's just, that's, that would, would have happened without saying anyway, because we did that with the, uh, the Muslim Americans and, you know, any, any other uh, Chinese Americans. We've been doing that every time we have a problem with some segment of the world, we take it out on the people that look like members of that part of the world, you know, despite who they really are. Okay, and the fact is they're all Americans, but they don't want to hear that. They just want to go beat them up. So we're already doing that here. So see, we're very close to losing our own freedoms in this country. But yet, a majority of Americans are in support, throwing in as much support as they can to help Ukraine. Okay? Uh, there's even people that are willing to pay the higher gas prices uh, as they are right now, even though the, the reason the gas prices are so high has absolutely nothing to do with Ukraine because we only got about 3% of our oil from Russia anyway, so we could easily have made that up by drilling our own oil in the first place, okay? But the fact is, is that um, people are willing to pay the high prices if it means they're helping Ukraine uh, under that why, and uh, they're gonna continue to uh, support Ukraine in any other way they can, and that's why you, got, you have some veterans uh, that have gone over there to help out because there is a feeling in this country that democracy is worth fighting for, okay? That it's worth dying for, even if, even if you're old, <laughs> okay? Because there are some Ukrainians over there that are old men, and they're fighting, okay? They know they could get shot or killed any day, but they're, they feel it's worth dying for, okay? They, they feel like that's, even though the people on the other side could be a, a family relative, that doesn't matter, okay? For, for a lot of people, patriotism is thicker than blood. <laughs> so they just feel like, hey, if I have to do this to keep my country free, then that's what I have to do. So that's why I'm saying, you know, the, the Russian people over there, I mean, how far are they willing to go to let something go on that they don't really sit 100% behind? Uh, are they willing to let this world come to the brink? And then do something, you know what I'm saying? Or are they just willing to sit behind, on their recliners and absolutely do nothing? And just, uh, you know, wait till they're vaporized. I mean, that, that's kind of like, you know, we're, that's the test we're being asked. Is how, how important is life uh, to us right now? You know, is it, uh, and, and how important is it to, uh, to, you know, stop a tyrant from killing children, bombing kindergartens, hospitals, which he did at the very beginning of this fight, Putin did, you know, does a man like that deserve to be ignored because we're too afraid of dying for our beliefs? I mean, I mean, is that, is that really what we're supposed to be? I mean, if that's the case, then, you know, fuck it. Why don't we just surrender the whole world right now to the, to the uh, Russians and just say, we can't fight you anymore. Okay. Because we, we have all these nukes, but we can't, we don't want to use them. We don't have the heart to use them because we don't want to see this world become we care more about that than we do about, you know, uh, you know, our, our, uh, our principles and stuff. Okay. So we'll live under a dictatorship and make the most of it. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's, that's kind of what we're, that's kind of what people are saying. You know, some people in the United States that they're willing to live under a dictatorship, uh, just so they can live an extra day or two in their life, even though it might be a miserable rest of their life because they won't have freedoms to do a goddamn thing, you know, they'll be living under the constant threat of being executed uh, if, the, if the other person it has a bad day when he wakes up in the morning, you know, it's just, you know, if that's how, if that's the kind of life you want, then, hey, push all the buttons now and get it over with, because I ain't going to live like that, and I don't think many other people will either, you know, fuck it, we'll all go, come to our maker and answer for what we've done. But I think that it's just, uh, 
it's sad that we've all lost our nerve, you know, to be able to defend this country. I mean, I think what happened is because our national pride has eroded so much over the last, you know, 50, 60 years that, you know, and thanks to uh, President Nixon and on the, and the shenanigans he pulled with the, you know, in the Vietnam War, which demoralized this country to levels that we don't even understand. <laughs> Because from that day on, nobody in this country ever trusts the government ever again. And that's where it all began. And so we've demoralized ourselves and our government so bad now that, you know, we don't really care anymore about losing it. Okay? But we do care about a democracy, which is something I think a lot of people think is unattainable anyway. But it's worth fighting to, for somebody to have. And if Ukraine has to be the one to get it while we lose ours, then we're willing to, to save Ukraine. You know, you know, tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, I just, I, you know, I'm not hearing much about anything from anybody, you know, except on off of this YouTube and on other places. But um, I'm not hearing anybody arguing the point that, you know, uh, dying for a principle is, is, uh, is a good thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you feel like, you know, losing a principle in order to have to be forced to live under another is a better thing then I wonder just how you really feel about living in the United States because maybe you're one of those people who are out there uh, willing to take, uh, sit back and let your voting right get taken away from you, who are willing to let uh, these, uh, these uh, communist leaders like Donald Trump get, uh, become president in this country. You know, maybe you're, maybe you're some of the folks out there who don't vote in every election, okay? Maybe you're not as interested in that as you think you are. Maybe it's just, you know... Uh, it's the right thing to say, politically correct, okay, but in your heart, you don't really believe it, okay, you don't, you, you hate America so much that you're not willing to try to fix it, you know, I don't know what it is, okay, but it's certainly, uh, it's certainly showing now uh, when you see our, a, a fellow nation who's, who is trying to be a democracy for uh, 30 years or so, uh, getting hit hard, you know, by the Russians, and even though those people are staying there, I mean, you got people that have brought their families to the border to escape Ukraine, and they're turning around and going back to fight. You know, it makes me wonder, are, are we still like that now? Or, or I mean, are we going to have to face down an enemy on our own soil in order to be able to find out just how American we really are? I mean, I, I, I would be interested in seeing that happen because personally, I would like to know who my allies are and who my enemies are. Okay, because if Fox News is willing to cheer on Putin as he's going, doing what he's doing in Ukraine, okay, and there's people that watch Fox News that agree with Fox News, and we already know right there just how many enemies we do have in our own midst, how many potential communist uh, aspirers there are in America, and we need to keep them at bay, okay? That might sound like... Uh, being a, a dictator by saying that, but that's preventing a potential future where the United States no longer is the United States anymore. It could be just another continent with a conflagration of little nations everywhere uh, fighting amongst each other, just like the rest of the world, okay? Um, so if you rather would have that instead of the United States, then you're not an American, okay? You're just not an American. Because that's the way they like it over there, apparently. Because they, they're told lies so that, that way they can justify in their minds why things happen in the world as they do. But apparently the young people over there know better because they've been they've, they've had access to the internet for a long time. They've seen news, they see what's going on in the rest of the world, and it's too late now for Putin to shut down uh, the outside world because the young people have seen so much of it, they know that they're being lied to. And that's why they're out there protesting, but they need to do more than that now. It's up to them, because NATO's put it in their hands, that they need to take out Putin on their own. You know, the military is going to have to turn against their own country. Uh, and it's not a first time for them to do something like that. So, you know, hey, if, if NATO wants to do that, then we have to ratchet up the level of this fight. We have to put it in the air, the no-fly zones, we have to threaten nukes, we have to do all of that in order to bring in those people the kind of fear that it's going to take to push them to go and do what we want them to do.
Dear CEO, what's it gonna take for you to do something? Yeah, do you even care? Climate change affects all of us. This is your chance to do something good. It long list, the glorious invasion of Ukraine begins. Soon, the motherland will take the wayward province into her firm embrace again. Field Marshal Putin offers cheers and many celebrations for American comrades who showed loyalty to Mother Russia. We have much gratitude and thanks for Fox News most especially comrade Tucker Carlson. For his loyalty, we'll receive highest Russian honor, the Order of Lenin. We thank Steve Bannon, admirer and student of Comrade Lenin, who led the Republicans to support of Comrade Putin's plans for Greater Russia. We thank GOP Comrade Senator Joshua Howley, who blocked enemies of Russia that the warmonger Biden wished to appoint to his regime. Russia waits 40 years for American Republicans to throw away disgrace of Ronald Reagan. Republicans say they stand for America. Comrade Putin knows better. Superman movie is brought to you by Canon, the world's leading camera manufacturer. Quick and tasty. Canavision 8 camcorders. Hey, I thought you were Superman, huh? Hey, I am. If it moves, shoot it with a Canon. The Fresh Maker. Little cinnamon gum freshens breath longer than big red. So kiss a little longer, stay close a little longer, hold tight a little longer, longer with big red. That big red freshness lasts right through it. Your fresh breath goes on and on. While you chew it, say goodbye a little longer, make it last a little longer. Give your breath long lasting freshness with big red. Want to build a super day? Then start with the one great taste that makes a super bowl of cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Just think of crispy golden flakes. Delicious, crunchy flakes of corn. So pure and simple, just can't wait. Low in sugar, loaded with vitamins and iron. So good for you, don't hesitate. For a super bowl of our most nutritious corn flakes ever. What a super bowl. Have yourself a super bowl. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Super taste, super good. a part of the entertainment value of a lifetime. I loved it. It was the best performance I've seen in a lifetime. I loved the show. I liked it very much. He's a very entertaining man. It's well worth the money. Now appearing in Charlottetown, coming to Halifax November 6th to the 18th, and St. John November 20th through 26th.
Okay, everybody, welcome back. So, this article here, and uh, what we have here is what's happening now with the uh, with with Russia's efforts to try to get China to help them. And this story here uh, from Reuters, uh, it's entitled Russia Fires. Uh, an official who said China refused to supply aircraft parts. Uh, Russian aviation authorities have fired an official who said last week that China had refused to supply Russian airlines with aircraft parts in the wake of Western sanctions, the Commerçant newspaper reported on Tuesday, citing sources and the official. Valery Kudinov, an official at Russia's Federal Air Transport Agency, Responsible for maintaining airplane airworthiness said Russia was in talks to source parts from countries including Turkey and India after a failed attempt to obtain them from China. An industry source confirmed to routers that Kudinov had been sacked, adding that he lost his job because of his public statements about China. Uh, Rosa Vitasia declined to comment. Uh, Russian newspaper Commerçant cited Kudinov as saying that he had been fired for disclosing information under a federal law governing how civil servants must behave. Russia's aviation sector is being squeezed by Western sanctions over the invasion of Ukraine. Russia on Monday passed a law allowing the country's airlines to place airplanes leased from foreign companies on the country's aircraft register and use them in Russia, even without permission of their owner. After a uh, Bermudian and Irish regulators suspended the certifications of Russian planes registered there. Sanctions have already cut off the supply of most foreign aircraft and parts to Russia as major international airplane manufacturers Boeing and Airbus have halted the supply of components. The United States and Europe have closed their airspace to Russian airlines with Russia responding in kind. So here they, they went after somebody who badmouthed China Okay, because they're trying to make relations with China so they can get some of their assets, right? I mean, <laughs> that's that's how bad it is. Russia, uh, Russia's not having this war easy in Ukraine thanks to the stuff that we've been sending Ukraine. Okay, but it's still a pitched battle, and it's still, you know, they're still, uh, you know, the Russians aren't gaining the ground they thought they would have by this time. Okay, the this, this cities are hard to maintain uh, because there's so much resistance there. And they can't hold them for long, and the the troops, the Russian troops are demoralized, and they're very uh, low on resources because of the sanctions, and uh, uh, you know it's just it's just too too much, and it's it's really pressuring Russia to to look toward China, who they never really liked in the first place, but. You know, they're going to China to ask them if they can help. And, you know, uh, what is his name over there? The re leader of China just says, oh, they're willing to talk about it. Okay. But uh, so far, there hasn't really been anything said. But this right here is an example of, you know, how bad the Russians want this this thing to happen with China. Is that, you know, and somebody comes out and says, oh, they, they didn't give us any parts when we want it. You know, then they say, you're fired and, you know, we'll probably execute you later on. You know, they don't want any bad press coming out about this potential uh, union here between these two countries to fight against Ukraine. Uh, so I, I just feel like, you know, that, that, should, that should be known to people that, you know, there is a movement right now in the Russian government to make an agreement with China to have China supply them with some aid. Uh, because I think, you know, the Chinese government probably has more up-to-date military than Russia does because Russia, like I said, their, their equipment's old. They haven't done a damn thing. And they've been actually been uh, tearing things apart since the Soviet Union fell. They, like I said here in the previous video, I mean, they decommissioned uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, submarines that they used to have, the nuclear submarines, and they've taken them apart and taken the cores, the, the nuclear cores in the submarines, and they're burying that shit somewhere. They hired a German company to do that because um, it's such a big undertaking that Russia couldn't afford to do it. So <coughs> they had a <coughs> Russian, a German company, excuse me, go in there, and, you know, they've been doing this for quite a while now. Uh, I don't know if they've finished the job, but they've certainly gotten rid of a lot of submarines that aren't being used. They're just sitting in the water getting rusty and, 
they figured that eventually they're going to have to do something because the reactors are still in there in those subs. So they had to take each one out of the water, cut the ends off. <laughs> so they have just the centerpiece where the core sits and they take in that and they send it somewhere to bury it somewhere. I don't know where the hell they send it, okay? But I wouldn't want to be anywhere within 100 miles of that place where they're burying that shit. <laughs> um, but the fact is, is that uh, Russia's military is, is antiquated. They're behind on just about everything. I mean, they, they're, still, they're still flying old MiGs and stuff like that. Um, they have some new, new equipment, but not enough, really, to to offset what the rest of the world is supplying Ukraine with. So whatever they're trying to do, they're going to have to ratchet it up a notch, which means chemical weapons are going to be in play here eventually. Uh, so I think that if, if, if Putin is willing to take to that, then we have to go and, and move into the next level, and that's put a no-fly zone in there. I don't know when we're going to do that, frankly. I really don't. But I'm hoping that maybe once they see the first chemical bomb go off, that NATO is going to say, okay, fuck it, we're putting a no-fly zone in there. And what he does after that, it's going to be on his head that it escalates to a, uh, an all-out war. Okay? So that's what I'm, I'm hoping that that's what will happen because then the people in Russia are going to feel like that's it. You know, our days are numbered here and we're, gonna, and we're not all along for this world. And they're going to finally say, fuck it, we're going to just go and take the damn capital. And no matter how many of us get killed in the process, at least we'll, we'll take it. Because there's not enough military left in Moscow to stop it from happening. So I just, I hope that's what happens because then that'll be the real test of just how, who's got the balls and who doesn't. And who's willing to uh, die for a cause and who ain't, you know. <laughs> we have to do this sometime, people. I mean, it's like every generation has its wars, you know. And, uh. We're no different than any other past generation. <clears throat> so, uh, I think all of us knew in, our, in the back of our minds that one day this would, this would be the, the, uh, a situation that would happen. I mean, we've, we've entertained it in movies. We thought about it uh, in private. Um, but we all knew the day was coming. It just took the right kind of situation to begin it, like what's happening now. Um, and it's going to put everybody uh, to the line. And the one that's going to have to step over it, you know, or not step over it is going to be what happens. We, I mean, we had that with the Cuban Missile Crisis, and we have to have it again, apparently. So, so in other words, what I'm trying to say is MAD doesn't work. <laughs> mutually, dis mutually assured destruction uh, is not a guarantee. I'm not going to say it doesn't work, but it's not a guarantee, okay? Because it all depends on who the players are at that point. And right now, we got Putin as a bad player, okay? But we have some good players on our side. Uh, but Putin has the ability to do a whole lot more damage than he's doing right now. And so do we. And it's really up to us. I mean, Putin and, and the rest of the world is going to have to be the ones to... to uh, just to bring this the level down, okay, to step back. Okay, that's that's why we have to elect good presidents. Because you know if Trump was president right now, we wouldn't be a member of NATO. We'd probably be siding with Russia, and Ukraine would already be gone. Okay? So, like I said, we have to have the, the intelligence to know that the kind of leaders that we put in in power have to be people who are intelligent enough to recognize uh, a disaster coming and and not be part of it but to be against it okay and if it means you have to fight a war to stop a war then you have to take that chance i mean that's just one of those things okay uh, it's it's a situation unfortunately that a lot a lot of countries have already faced before uh, this incident here has happened but uh, we don't get to hear much about that, okay? Uh, like right now, let me see. Uh, uh, where the hell was that article? In Myanmar, there's a huge fight going on there, but the world's really focused on uh, Ukraine, that they're not really paying much attention to about what's going on over there. Let's see if I can find it again here. Hold on. Okay, so I found it here. 
Uh, what you have is this uh, report here from uh, uh, CNA. Uh, in, uh, it's uh, entitled Clear Indications of uh, Myanmar Military Crimes Against Humanity, says the UN. Uh, Geneva. The United Nations on Tuesday, March 15th, announced mass killings in Myanmar and accused the military of possible war crimes and crimes against humanity since last year's coup d'etat. The UN Human Rights Office urged the international community to take immediate steps to halt the spiral of violence in Myanmar. Myanmar. Uh, Myanmar's military seized power on February the 1st last year, ousting the civilian government and arresting its de facto leader, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi. The uh, Huanta has since waged a bloody crackdown on dissent. dissent. Uh, in a report covering the period since the takeover, UN Human Rights Chief Michelle Bachelet's office said that uh, Myanmar's military and security forces had shown a flagrant disregard for human life. It described how the military had bombarded populated areas with airstrikes and heavy weapons and deliberately targeted civilians, many of whom were shot in the head, burned to death, arbitrarily arrested, tortured, or used as human shields. Quote, we have already been able to identify a pattern over the past year which indicates that this is planned, coordinated uh, systemic attacks, that there are clear indications that they would uh, amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity, unquote. UN Human Rights Office spokeswoman Ravina Shemdasani told reporters in Geneva, quote, this is the clearest yet indication of the commission of these crimes, unquote. So I can't help but think that perhaps uh, this is being... This is going on because they know that the UN is not willing to, you know, come into the rescue, as it were. And so now all these these uh, hateful leaders here are committing war crimes, like Russia, knowing that we're never going to answer for it because now we know the UN doesn't really answer uh, or doesn't really re follow their own goddamn rules when when they're broken. Okay, they, they, they're, they're powerless, and they're too afraid of sparking, you know, escalations in, in violence by defending helpless people. And, you know, I, I expect that more of these things are going to happen around the world because now, they're, now we're being tested. NATO's been tested here by Russia, and we're failing that test in every way possible. Okay, yeah, we're helping behind the scenes, and we're doing sanctions, but... In, in this day and age, that's not enough, okay? It's not enough. Uh, because they, you know, there's always countermeasures to things like that. And Russia is seeking that out right now with China. And there's always going to be allies to people we don't like. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, like I said, it's, it's really sad that this is where we are now because now the situation is going to become a bit more complicated than it was before um, and if we don't hurry up and put in the no-fly zones we might as well just wash our hands of the whole thing and say uh, Russia you can take Ukraine uh, we don't care and the people that used to live there if they go back they're gonna be under Russia's thumb and if not whatever I mean even even Zelensky here he said to, uh, today um, this is what he, he, he addressed uh, the UN again. He said uh, in this article uh, that Ukraine is unlikely now to join NATO, uh, the Western Security Alliance that uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin has demanded Ukraine never join. Uh, he made a call for increased security commitments from the West. Uh, in an address before the UK's Joint Expeditionary Force, Zelensky said Ukraine was still seeking security guarantees short of joining NATO. The Ukrainian president said it was clear, you know, quote unquote clear, that Ukraine was not a member of NATO, uh, and that was repeated by the Washington Post. Uh, quote, for years we heard about the apparently open door, but have already also heard that we will not enter, and these are truths and must be acknowledged, unquote. Uh, so, you know, we're hearing now that he's kind of conceded to the fact that he's not going to get the help he wants, Okay. And now what I feared was going to happen is going to happen. They're not going to join NATO now because they can't be trusted. Uh, when they tell you we're going, to be, we're going to be at your side if Russia comes after you, we've, we've, uh, we've broke that promise. Okay, 
we don't we don't have the balls to, to honor our agreements with countries that want to be democracies. And that's sad. And that's unfortunately going to be something that Republicans will use against Biden when they when we have our elections. They're going to accuse Biden of not honoring his uh, this country's pledge to defend Ukraine against Russia. Okay? And that's going to be a source of much contention there in this country in, in days to come. Um, they were looking for something to hit a, a, a Biden with. Well, here you go. Nothing bigger than that, really. They don't have to look for corruption. All they got to do is look for, you know, you know, a, a time when the president's word meant nothing. Um, and it, it won't matter what he's accomplished before that. Um, this is going to be a hell of a fucking thing, an uphill fight, because if we don't, if we don't change our tactic and provide more for Ukraine, then, you know, I can't see, uh, you know, another term with Biden as president. We're going to end up with a Republican, um, you know. And so this is something, you know, we can't say, you know, uh, somebody from the outside put Biden in the situation. OK, this was completely a situation Biden had control uh, to do on his own. And. Uh, you know, he can't come out and say, well, this Republican over here put the situation in play and, you know, and yada, yada, yada. Okay, there's there's going to be no wiggling out of this thing. So, um, when you have the majority of Americans wanting to put a no-fly zone in Ukraine and the president isn't backing it, that's not good. Okay, because the, the support has to come from the top down. And if the president's not behind it, but the people are, then the people are going to revolt against the president come the next election. That's, that's just how it is. You know, and, the, and you can't blame the Republicans for that because this wasn't something of their doing. This was just fortunate happenstance for them, okay? This is a gift from somebody uh, to give to the Republicans to, to give them guaranteed victory for the next presidency. Even if they want to run Trump, I, I can tell you right now, after, if after they beat Biden down with this thing right here, Trump will win another, uh, win another presidency. That I can tell you, okay? I, will, I can almost guarantee that. That's how that's how bad this is going to look for Biden down the road. So you know, I'm just I'm just saying here. I mean, I'm not trying to shit on Biden or anything like that. Okay, I'm just saying that it's a very disappointing outcome uh, when you got the Ukrainian leader already conceding to the fact that you know he may have to live under Russian rule because he can't expect any help from NATO. You know, the the weapons that he's getting, uh, it's not going to be any good if there's nobody left to to use them. <laughs> You know, stuff. You know, the, if all the soldiers are dying they're right and left, and who's going to drive the tanks? Who's going to launch the rockets? Who's going to uh, pull the trigger on the guns? He ain't going to have anybody left. Okay, and a lot of his people are conscripts right now. They don't. He never had much of a military. Okay, and a lot of the people uh, fighting right now are just regular civilians or retired veterans. Okay, they're just uh, they're being asked to do something that they haven't done in some cases and haven't done in a long time in other cases. Uh, and even though Zelensky is, is a great leader in his country, and I wish we had more leaders like him, uh, he's, he's seeing now the writing on the wall, and it's just, you know, uh, it's not good, okay? I don't know how he's going to deal with this. He's, they're, negoti they're already talking, Russia and Ukraine, trying to, kind of, trying to find some common ground here so they can put a stop to this thing, a ceasefire. Um, and the only thing I know Russia is saying is you have, you've got to guarantee you're not going to join NATO is one, is one thing. Okay. And then later there'll be other things that, you know, we're going to want to have, uh, oversight over your government and all this, you know, so they're going to lose their freedom over there. Eventually that's what's going to happen until Putin dies and somebody tries to come up with something else. But, uh, apparently, you know, this war is really going to end a lot of things that was going good for Ukraine. But it made you made it it made uh, Putin and others jealous because it was working out so well in Ukraine. They didn't want the rest of their country to see how well a democracy can work. You know they had to go and attack it. It was making the Russian way of life look like shit when uh, the people when the Russians would go to Ukraine and see a virtual paradise in comparison. Um, you know it just. That's the way it is, you know, and that's why he didn't want this country bordering his. It make it so much easier to cross over and see how a democracy works 
Um, he knew that would be like a virus going into his country, that it would spark a movement that he could not stop. And so he had to, he had to turn that around in Ukraine and make that uh, part of Russia again, if at all anything, to destroy its way of life so that way it doesn't look so good there anymore. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 I kind of figured, you know, a week ago that if we don't put that no-fly zone in there, uh, he was going to start talking about backing out of uh, any agreement with NATO. And that's unfortunate, like I said, because here we had the opportunity uh, to finally show the rest of the world that a democracy is worth dying for, okay, and, it, and it's worth be a better way of life than living under a dictatorship or a tyrant, okay, and... Uh, we, we've dropped the ball on it, and uh, it's almost too late now to go back and try to fix that. Uh, because, like I said, giving them weapons is not enough. Because if you don't have the, the, the military troops, the, the boots on the ground, uh, the cliche, I hate to use it a lot, but if we don't have the boots on the ground to use this stuff, then you know what? It's, you're just going to have a parking lot full of stuff that ain't being used. So, you know, I don't know. I just I feel like this is really sad that. Even though they're holding Russia at bay as best they can and making it very difficult for them to control parts of Ukraine, uh, in a way they're they're already kind of losing the war on the political aspect of it because uh, the rest of the world is not really moving uh, to defend a potential ally uh, or being part of NATO, as it were. And like I said, that government there won't won't ask again okay you know they just they'll just say fuck it you know we'll be our own nation and you know because i think this is this is the point where you're going to start to see nato's uh credibility stained to the point where other countries might even consider leaving nato because they can't depend on it now if their countries fall under attack and you're going to see a rise in countries build up of military all across the globe uh, you're going to see a lot of military spending because nobody's going to be able to trust their neighbors, the neighboring countries anymore. Uh, and this, this is the, I think this will be the spark that's going to slowly, you know, you're going to see fewer and fewer nations in, involved in that and it's just going to fall apart. And you're going to have, you know, every country on it, just like it was before World War II, every nation for itself, okay? And I think that is a bigger problem than even this that'll spark a World War III when you have nations on their own and paranoia being driven up by, and you see the military buildup happening all across the planet. Um, it only takes one little thing to happen, and before you know it, you got the whole fucking world involved in it, and nobody is there to try to stop it because they've all lost the unity that they had under the UN. <laughs> okay? So this that would be more dangerous, I think, than even this situation here to have a potential nuclear war. Um, because um, when you have a situation like that, um, you've got so many people and so many personalities to consider. Uh, and we know that there's a lot of uh, countries in this world that have never, ever saw a ceasefire in, in, in my lifetime or in your lifetime or your grandparents' lifetime. They've been fighting since the start of time. And, it, and, even if you, and if you gave them nuclear weapons, they would automatically use them right off the bat, not even giving a shit about what happens after. Uh, and you know, you, I think you know who I'm talking about. Okay. So if they had the nukes, they would use them the minute after they got them. Okay. They'd be right in the launch bays and up in the air before you know it. So that's why I say if, if, uh, the UN falls apart because the countries don't feel like they can depend on it, then, Hey, that's it. You know, it's, it's the clock is ticking. <laughs> the clock is ticking. Uh, and on top of all this shit, there's another version of COVID-19 breaking out in China that's really got everybody in a panic over there, I guess. Um, and here's this article here from the AP. It says, COVID-19 cases more than doubled in China's growing outbreak. Uh, China's new COVID-19 cases on Tuesday more than doubled from the previous day as the country faces by far its biggest outbreak since the early days of the pandemic. The, the National Health Commission said 3,507 
new locally spread cases had been identified in the last 24-hour period, up from 1,337 a day earlier. A fast-spreading variant known as, quote, stealth Omicron, unquote, is testing China's zero-tolerance strategy, which had kept the virus at bay since the deadly initial outbreak in the city of Wuhan in early 2020. China has recorded more than 10,000 cases in the first two weeks of March, far exceeding previous flare-ups. No new deaths have been reported in the multiple outbreaks across China, and the case count remains low compared to many other countries in the world. The UK recorded more than 440,000 cases in the past week. Hong Kong, a semi-autonomous city that tracked its outbreak separately from the mainland, reported 26,908 new cases on Monday alone. Nearly three-fourths of China's new infections were in uh, Jilin, a province in the northeast that reported 2,601 cases. Smaller outbreaks have hit more than a dozen provinces and major cities, including Beijing and Shanghai. Jilin has barred residents from leaving the province and from traveling between cities within it. The nine million residents of Kangchung, the provincial capital and an auto manufacturing hub, have been locked down since Friday as authorities conduct repeated rounds of mass testing both there and in the city of Jilin. More than 1,000 medical workers have been flown in from other provinces along with pandemic response supplies, and the province has mobilized 7,000 military reservists to help with the response. Elsewhere in China, uh, Shandong province had the most new cases with 106, uh, Guangdong province in the southeast, where the metropolis and major tech center of Shenzhen has been locked down since Sunday reported uh, <coughs> 48 new cases. Shanghai had nine and Beijing six. Okay, so um, they did report right here in Maine, we've seen an increase in the amount of uh, COVID patients showing up in the hospitals here, um, which has got, you know, people here kind of concerned uh, that maybe we, we counted our chickens too soon by not by letting people walk around without wearing a mask <laughs> okay um and i've noticed a lot of people these days haven't in maine haven't really been wearing it when they sh when i think they should be um and so that's when you open the door like that covid is ready there to walk in so i don't know if this if this increase has anything to do with this uh what are the uh cloak omicron whatever the fuck they call it um, or not, I don't know if that's what it is, but it just seems coincidental that while China has this increasing problem here uh, with this uh, stealth Omicron <coughs> increasing in their country, that now we're seeing an increase in Maine of more people showing up with the this, with this sickness. So um, I don't know if, if, if that's already here. If it is, they're not saying. Um, but this is happening right now in China, and usually what happens in China eventually happens around the rest of the world. Uh, and this Chinese ships are going. Um, unless they do that, I don't know. Um, but if we don't want that here, then I would suggest that uh, there be some closures of our uh, domestic uh, international flights. Um, cruise lines, I think we ought to do that too. Uh, just lock it, lock it down all across the board. Don't let anybody into this country, uh, you know, for a while and um, until we, they're tested. Uh, I mean, that's that's what, these are the things you have to do, people. I mean, there's no magic. You can't snap your finger here, uh, like Q, and just wish this stuff away. Um, we have there's a procedure that has been tested and proven over the course of human life that when you're fighting a virus, the best thing to do is not be anywhere near it to, to prevent yourself from getting it, okay? And if you are near it, then you need to uh, suit up, as we call it, uh, to protect yourself. And if you don't like wearing the suit, we understand, but if you rather uh, wear the suit than die, then hey, there's no choice. I mean, you, you don't just, you know, you don't, you don't want to die from this. Nobody wants to die from it. So if you don't, then this is how you this is how you fight against it. Okay, the the, the inoculations, the vaccinations, whatever. Uh, these things have to be have to be accepted. Um, 
Even if we were in a communist country, they would ask you to do this, okay? So it doesn't fucking matter whether you live in a democracy or a communist country or whatever fucking label you want to put on something, okay? They're all going to be telling you the same fucking thing. Wear a mask, get vaccinated, uh, we live lockdowns. It's the same way because that's all we know. That's the only way you can protect. We don't know any other way of, of protecting ourselves from virus. And if somebody out there does, please say something. Okay, a lot of you Republicans out there that don't want to wear a mask and all that shit, please, uh, if you have a better way of fighting this, would you let us know what that is, okay, because otherwise uh, more bodies are going to wind up buried here before the end of the year, okay, and if you give a shit at all about your families uh, and yourself, then you'll tell us what it is you know or you think you know that'll prevent this from spreading. We've been waiting for two years now for you guys to say well, how you know what you know and say, uh, you know, not getting vaccinated and all that is going to be, uh, is going to save you, okay? Uh, it's time to, to prove it, prove it, you know? Because right now, none of you have. And all the people that have been saying that, well, there aren't too many of those voices out there now because a lot of them have already died from it. So you, you, gotta, you have to start telling us what you know and how you know it. Because if you don't, uh, then you're just as guilty as the virus itself for taking out as many lives as it's taken. So I'm, I'm just saying, you know, it's time to put your money where your mouth is, as, as it were. Um, oh, so here's, here's a little for the last thing here. Uh, this is from Market Watch. It says, U.S. companies are rushing to suspend or curtail operations in Russia. But guess who isn't? The Koch brothers. <coughs> um... A flood of U.S. companies have announced plans to suspend, close, or curtail activities in Russia following that country's invasion of neighboring Ukraine, but one prominent conglomerate seems to be operating on a business-as-usual basis. Koch Industries, the Wichita, Kansas company run by right-wing billionaire Charles Koch, has offered no statement on any plan to pull back from Russia, where it has several units that make industrial glasses, electronic components, and products for the chemical and petrochemical and specialty chemical industries according to the popular information newsletter uh without reading this any further i think you know where i'm going to go on this why aren't we going to put sanctions on this company okay if they're going to do business with russia from the united states then we have to we have to punish them for that okay um the united states needs to uh, lock up uh this company but I know it's not going to happen because this company is a monster. And it's run by, you know, very, very wealthy people. People who have been donating tons of money to the campaigns for the Republican Party. Okay. And uh, they're, they're going to be able to continue to do business with Russia no matter how many sanctions are, are out there. And, you know, it makes me wonder, you know, this is, this is one of the things why people can't trust uh, NATO and the United States right now because of the fact that we we don't live up to what we say we do Okay um, In this country business money talks and bullshit walks. Okay um, and It's never been any more truer than it is these days And right now money's talking they can't afford to go after the Koch brothers because their their hands are so tied into the goddamn uh, political structure of this country that you know, they and themselves could be considered a government in America. And that's why they're doing this. And I don't see that they're at, that the government's going to do anything to stop them from doing business with Russia. Okay? So we, got, we have a Russian supporter in our midst in the form of this company. And while the American people are screaming... Uh, to continue to punish Russia by the sanctions and, and having uh, no-fly zones over the air, uh, they're probably not going to say much about this this problem here with Coke Industries. And you know, it's you know until we, we until we have a a perfect lockup of relations between Russia and the rest of the world. Uh, they're still going to have a hole to breathe air through, you know what I'm saying? To keep them going. 
But I think the rest of the world needs to take note of this and maybe they can stop doing business with this industry altogether if, if, and make it so that way Russia is the only country they can do business with. Um, and I don't think that the Coke Industries is going to survive that because with the ruble plummeting the way it is, uh, there's not going to be enough money for them to buy a damn thing. <laughs> um, so this will affect Coke Brothers as well if everybody else in the world doesn't do business with this company either. Um, and, and that also, because they do business with Russia still, other companies who would rather be doing business with Russia now instead of not can go through this agency here or this company uh, as a medium to go to do business in Russia because they're not enforcing a, a, a restriction on this on the coke industries. So this this is going to make coke industries a big fucking ton of money. And when the rest of the world is starting to use this company as a go between to do business with Russia, and you know a lot of that's going to be all underhanded and uh, and uh, records are going to be. Uh, kept secret, you know, as to how deep they're going to be involved in getting around uh, global sanctions against this country during a time of war. You know, this is this is setting this up for a big fucking problem here, and we have to we have to insist that this company abide by the United States government's wishes here to stop doing business. And if they're not doing that, okay, then we're creating a monster here. So I, I just, you know, when I saw this, I was like, what? But then I remember about their family history in Nazi Germany, and I think, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, all, all they, all, they're just keeping quiet about it. You know, they're trying to be, the news agencies are trying to question them about why this is going on, and they're not saying a damn thing. <laughs> Uh, but I, I'm wondering why that I had to find this in such a obscure area of the, uh, you know, of, uh, the internet to find this story because it's not really mainstream and it should be, uh, that this company's doing that. And, I'm I think a lot of Americans should know that we aren't, not everybody in the United States is against Russia least of all Fox News and that's another company that ought to be hit with sanctions or something because if they're standing with Russia that means they got ties to Russia in some fucking way okay they're either getting paid by Russians or something like that to say good things or they're just idiots <laughs> okay but you know the United States really should uh, just shut that down if they're just gonna be a propaganda mouthpiece for Russia then we don't need that in the United States right now okay we just we need to be unified um, and in some ways we are because we've got both Republicans and Democrats uh, finding common ground here against what to do with Russia so Fox News is trying to uh, fracture that unification as they always do that's all they're good for is is any anything that could unify this country together they're there to split it up again okay to shoot it in the ass that's all they're good for. When, when Americans can come together on something, that's when Fox News is uh, awakened and they go out to shoot that in the butt. So that way everybody's back at each other's throats again. Because they can't, Republicans cannot win elections unless there's internal fighting going on in this country. That's the only way they can win. When you got people fighting each other and, and, and divisions take place, because they can't win on their fucking record they can't win on an agenda because they have none um, they've got nothing to run on so all they can do is, is throw mud at the other side and, and create division in America that's all they can do okay well uh, so much for any good news coming out of this thing today but uh, anyway um, that's it for now and uh, I hope uh, everybody has a great rest of the week um, and uh, stay healthy out there um, be careful open to any local COVID-19 news that comes out um, and uh, if you want to comment uh, please subscribe and uh, you know go ahead and uh, comment and then you know you'll get updates whenever I put up a new video 
and uh, I will talk to you all another time, so be well, everybody. Bye -bye.